Hi guys, I'm Robin, and this is our series on turbocharger failures. Now in previous videos, we talked about lubrication and foreign objects. Now we're gonna talk about overpressure. The last type of turbo failure I wanna show you is overpressure within the turbine or compressor sides. Now, when operating, the compressor and the turbine wheels are exposed to some pressure impact of either compressed air or exhaust gases. On one of the sides, it's the pressure of the compressed air leaving the compressor outlet, and on the other hand, pressure from the exhaust downpipe, so-called back pressure, where the utilized exhaust flow is directed. The thrust bearing on the shaft is designed to level the impact of the side pressures occurring during the normal operating conditions. Along with the journal bearing, it ensures the shaft proper balance and friction-free rotation. Any inaccuracies causing the side pressures to raise abnormally will lead to serious failures. At first, the thrust bearing will be impaired and consequently the shaft will be set out of balance. This will typically end up on the wheels touching the housings, tearing and damaging. Now this compressor wheel had the blades completely torn off as the shaft started moving. Leaking oil seals may also occur as the shaft moves back and forth. In the end, the shaft may completely break as well. Concluding an extreme in-out play on the turbo shaft may be a sign of pressures that are too high, and seeing this thrust bearing leaves no doubts. This visible grooving is the outcome of an excessive thrust pressure affecting the turbo. The excessive thrust pressures may have several sources in the vehicle. On the compressed air side, the boost that is generated will typically be too high. It might happen by car tuning or changing of the factory settings of the turbo. A malfunctioning blow-off valve or MAP sensor could often be a reason for a high boost level. Intercooler clogs or carbon built up within the intake manifold will also limit the boosted airflow and cause the pressure to raise drastically. On the other side with the exhaust flow, an excessive back pressure after the turbo is the main reason for the failure. Sludge, soot, and carbon built up on the exhaust line and the exhaust treating devices are the main culprits here. Now depending on the engine, a jam DPF filter or catalytic converter will increase the back pressure significantly. Now this may occur as substantial failures of unclean combustion and refitting the filters is expensive and sometimes the only option. There are many common types of failure that a turbo can suffer from. But remember, before you replace the turbo, it's critical to find out what caused the problem in the first place. We'll talk about troubleshooting methods for turbocharged systems in a future video. I'm Robin, and thanks for letting me show you what's under the hood. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe, and ring the bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And if there's something specific that you want me to do a video on in the future, don't forget to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.